This is Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. Film Bookcast. The official podcast of Film Book. Get ready for the latest in film news, TV show news, and theatrical reviews. Film Book's podcast starts now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Film Bookcast, the official podcast of Film Book. My name is Chris Banks. If you're tuning in to Film Bookcast for the first time, what I do on this podcast is discuss the latest film and TV show news, as well as review and in theater film. You can find more Film Bookcast on film book.com by using the search term Film Bookcast. You can also email us at podcast at film book.com with Film Bookcast in the subject line. Let's jump right into it this week. This week in movie trailers is a dark, creepy trailer from Epics in Blumhouse. It's called The House on the Bayou. It's directed by Alex McCulley. It's also written by Alex McCulley, and it stars Angela Safiron, Paul Schneider, Leah McHugh, Jacob Laughlin, Doug Van Lu, and Lauren Richards. It's a very creepy story, but in an effort to reconnect and mend their relationship, Jessica and John seek a getaway with with their daughter, Anna, to a remote mansion in rural Louisiana. When suspiciously friendly neighbors show up for dinner uninvited, the weekend takes a sinister turn as the fragile family bond is tested and dark secrets come to light. It looks very creepy. Check out the trailer for A House on the Bayou. It's dark, and it's going to debut November on Epics. Another movie trailer that caught my eye is Soulmates. It debuts in theaters November 12th. That's about two lifelong best friends, Sam and Jess. They're each other's everything. But Jess meets a handsome out-of-state man who works for a corporation that neither best friend likes. So the story is a really relevant and biting story about what happens when someone close to you, they say in the trailer, quote-unquote, is being corrupted. I think it's a very relevant topic for all of us. Check out the trailer for Soulmates. It looks like a really touching comedy, and it just brings back memories of of old school movies that people would fill the theater to see. And I really like what I see in the trailer. For, so check out the trailer for Soulmates. The last movie trailer we'll talk about this week is coming from Netflix, and it stars Idris Elba, Jonathan Majors, Regina King, Lakeith Stanfield. It looks really cool. It's about a it's a western. It's a stacked western, but it's interesting because Elba plays Rufus Buck who seems like he's an all-time criminal who just got released and they're making sure everything is in order and it just looks really cool check out the trailer for the harder they fall it'll debut on netflix november 3rd let's switch up gears and check out some tv trailers this week in tv trailers disney plus dropped the official just beyond trailer for the upcoming anthology series it's an adaptation of the R.L. Stein's horror graphic novels of the same name. All eight episodes will be available for streaming on Wednesday, October 13th. The trailer teases eight unique supernatural stories that will haunt viewers this Halloween season, including stories about witches, aliens, and ghosts. R.L. Stein's previous novels, Goosebumps, centered around young protagonists, so, and it looks like from the trailer that Just Beyond will as well. The eight-episode anthology series tells astonishing and thought-provoking stories of reality just beyond the one we know. Each episode introduces viewers to a new cast of characters who must go on a surprising journey of self-discovery in a supernatural world of witches, aliens, ghosts, and parallel universes. Check out the trailer for Just Beyond. It'll debut on Disney Plus October 13th. Another TV trailer that dropped this week is Love Life Season 2 by HBO Max. This season, William Jackson Harper is featured, like us all, trying to figure life out, dealing with the ups and downs of dating and the technology and the ever-increasing speed of life. I think this season looks really good. Check out the trailer for Season 2 of Love Life. It'll debut on HBO November 4th. The last TV trailer we'll check out this week is another one from HBO Max, but it's the last season of Insecure. And wow, does it look awesome. She's going to date, I think, from what's in the trailer. It just looks really beautiful. It's They're still evaluating their relationships, creating new ones, reevaluating old ones. Everybody can relate to her journey in this show. It's just beautiful to see what this season is going to bring. Check out the trailer for Insecure. 
TV news from this week includes Fox pilot The Last Police adds Blue Hunt, Renew Wilson, Maximiliano Hernandez, and Don Lewis to its cast. Written and directed by Killen, The Last Police, as an asteroid races toward an apocalyptic collision with Earth, a small-town detective played by Hunt believes she's been chosen to save humanity, while her cynical partner Wilson, played by Wilson, can't decide that what he'll enjoy more, her delusional failure or the end of the world itself. Hunt plays Detective Mackenzie Ward. She's a sharp young detective who, as our story begins, has decided to end her life on her own terms rather than wait for the Earth's annihilation and its impending collision with an asteroid. When her suicide attempt fails, she, att- she attributes her survival to being chosen for a special purpose, and going forward, she's a relentless ambassador for optimism and hope in a world that's ever short on both. Blue Hunt and and Rena Wilson are set as leads, and Maximiliano Hernandez, Don Lewis, Derek Phillips, and Troy Kotzer have been cast as series regulars. Continuing this week in TV news, IMDb TV, Amazon's premium free streaming service, is developing an updated take on a cult classic. The 1999 movie Cruel Intentions is set for a series now on IMDb TV. In this new incarnation of the premise, which is rooted in the novel Liaisons, two ruthless step-siblings will do anything to stay on top, in this case, of the Greek life hierarchy in an elite Washington, D.C. college. After a brutal hazing incident threatens the entire system, they'll do whatever is necessary to preserve their power and reputation, even seduce the daughter of the vice president of the United States. Phoebe Fisher is writing the pilot, and Sarah Goodman is supervising. They're set to write the series together, but there's no word yet on when the series will debut. We'll keep up with news from this. The last bit of TV news we'll check out comes from Hulu, and it's a new series called The Girl from Plainville. They added six cast members, including Peter Coretti, Michael Mosley, Ella Kennedy Davis, Pearl Amanda Dixon, Kylie Leah Page, and Jeff Wahlberg. They'll appear opposite of stars Ellie Fanning, Colton Ryan, Kai Lennox, Cara Buono, Chloe Savingi, and Nobert Leo Boontz. The limited series comes from Liz Hanna and Dr. Death executive producer Patrick McCamus. Written by Hanna and McCamus, The Girl from Plainville is, is inspired by the, tr- by the true story of Michelle Carter's controversial sexting suicide case. Based on the Esquire article of the same name by Jesse Barron, the limited series will explore Cardi's play by Fanning, her relationship with Conrad Roy III, played by Ryan, and the events that led up to his death and later her controversial conviction of involuntary manslaughter. Geretti will be Conrad Roy Sr., the patriarch of the family. Mosley will be Joseph Collado, the attorney representing Michelle Carter. Davis will appear as Sidney Roy, Coco's younger sister. Dixon will play Susie Pierce. She meets Michelle at a softball tournament. Paige will play Casey Wilkins, a friend of Michelle's at school. Wahlberg is going to play Rob Mahoney, Coco's closest friend. We'll keep up with news as they release release dates for the show. Let's switch up gears and head on over to some movie news. This week in movie news, there's a new film, it's untitled, coming from Netflix. Jonah Hill is the star, and David Duconvoy and Nia Long just joined the comedy. Kenya Barris is directing the Netflix comedy. It's an ensemble piece that already includes Lauren London, Eddie Murphy, Julia Louise Dreyfus, Sam Jay, and Molly Gordon. It follows a new couple played by Hill in London who find themselves examining modern love and the family dynamics amidst, amidst clashing cultural and societal expectations and generational differences. Some more movie news is very hopeful news from movie theaters as Shang-Chi becomes the first COVID-era film to gross over, over $200 million in the American box office. Bad Boys for Life was the last film to hit this mark, and it's the first film since the theater shut down back in March 2020 to gross over $200 million at the, at the domestic box office. Disney announced that the Marvel Studios film hit that milestone as it entered its fifth weekend in theaters having taken the number one spot on charters on charts every weekend in September. Released exclusively in theaters, the film the film has already topped the 183.5 million domestic total that Black Widow earned. Shang-Chi is also set to break Black Widow's global weekend record. Bad Boys for Life was the last film to do this. The success of Shang-Chi as well as Free Guy has led Disney to announce that all of its remaining films this year will be released exclusively in theaters. Encanto will get a 30-day theatrical exclusive release window 
before being released on Disney Plus on Christmas Eve. The last bit of movie news we'll check out this week comes from Tyler Perry and Jason Blum. They're creating a new film called Help. No details have been released about the plot, but it will start production in Atlanta in 2022. Blum was most recently served as a producer on Halloween Kills, which comes out this month. All right. For this week's movie review, we have to talk about The Many Saints of Newark. It just came out in theaters. It's directed by Alan Taylor. Directed by Alan Taylor, it's produced and written by David Chase and Lawrence Connor, as well as Nicole Lambert. It just came out in theaters. It's also on HBO Max. It's the prequel film to the Sopranos series. Young Anthony Soprano is growing up in one of the most tumultuous eras in Newark's history, becoming a man just as rival gangsters begin to rise up and challenge the all-powerful Demio crime family's hold over the increasingly race-torn city. Caught up in the changing times is the uncle he, ideal- he idolizes, Dickie Maltesanti, who struggles to manage both his professional and personal responsibilities and whose influences over his impressionable nephew will help make the teenager into an all-powerful mob boss we'll later know as Tony Soprano. I hope anyone listening to this watched The Sopranos. If you haven't watched The Sopranos, stop and don't listen to this because it's way better to start with The Sopranos. I, The Sopranos was my favorite show on television. It changed TV. It's credited for changing TV forever because it took something that was used to be abstract, which is the world of the mob, and it made it really real for viewers. That's really the magic of what The Sopranos was as a TV show. Is it really brought because there was there was romantic films made about The Godfather and Goodfellas, and there were many real aspects of the life within those films but the sopranos really gave viewers a fundamental in the room kind of feeling about what it was like to be a mobster you know what it was like to be in the family what it was like to be a husband or a son and that's what made the sopranos a unique and groundbreaking tv show i respected chase for not really going near it for so long and the way he goes about the many saints of newark is really with a scruple because it's so delicately and perfectly done how he stretches out this story and gives us great context and great backdrop for these characters who we thought that we knew. I mean, I thought that I knew Tony Soprano, but having saw The Many Saints of Newark, I know him so much better now. In the same way with Silvio and Janice is in here in a, in a really interesting way. I wish she kind of had a bigger part in it. But you, what really shocked me at the very beginning was it took me a while to understand this is Christopher's voice we're hearing. Like we, we and Christopher narrates The Many Saints of Newark. It's the most beautiful choice that chase could have made because it's it's a perfect tie to everything that's going on and the way that he speaks about his own life really gives tremendously rich context to the viewer and any lover of the sopranos i love they keep saying but that was much later the the way christopher narrates the film is perfectly done in how it ties into what happened during the Sopranos universe. Another aspect of this film that I wasn't really expecting was the racial component. You know, the Sopranos really didn't touch on much to do with any social commentary. It was really just about the world of the mob. But this movie really has a big social commentary going on throughout the film, which I don't think is purposefully hidden. You get much more context with understanding the differences between, you know, black gangs and Italian mob, you know, and the differences between, you know, working within the law, working around the law, and just ignoring the law, you know, and then what each group of gangs really got to do you know was really based on what they did in relation to the law you know the mob had everybody on their payroll you know and you can do a lot more when you have people on your payroll you know versus black gangs who had to you know really just run from the law and then ignore the law you know and that's why this the the dynamic between law enforcement was so different 
back then. And it's just great to speak on that because it gives the view a great context about to see that the, 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 the difference is corruption. <laughs> That's the difference. You know, we, the, we as white people, you know, has, have corrupted this entire government since day one, you know, and we've, we've, we've strong armed, you know, regions and, and cities to really just operate in our own, um, preferences, you know, and that's what finally is not happening anymore. It's finally changing and it needs to because you see, you know, the Dickie Moltisanti has a has a line in the film that, you know, he criticizes um black gangs for not um being as smart as the mob. But how can you be as smart, quote unquote smart as the mob when you don't have the mayor's police department and some judges on your payroll? You know, because that's what the mob had. You know, the mob had a, 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 a ties with the the president eventually, you know, and, and and you know it's just it's night and day in the in the in the many saints of Newark speaks on those differences and how night and day it was. And I was not expecting that, and that was a really cool tasteful um rich choice by chase to add that in there and like to see these characters as kids is emotional you know it really helps you um fill in the blank of who they are as people where they came from how they became who they ended up being what the the first real sopranos moment was when um dickie killed uh ray Liotta's character and it was like a really abrupt like wow this is like it was just a real solid taste of the sopranos world again and it and for me i'm i i love that show so much and i watched it every day and it was just the best thing that a, a lover of the sopranos could 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 see which is you know just a, 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 i mean even though it's bad to see someone being killed it's still satisfying to see the, the you know the sopranos style um again you know, I love seeing uh, Tony as a kid, you know, taking bets from his classmates. And, you know, you, you just see all you saw all the building blocks that he had to become an eventual mob boss. But I mean, that's what makes the movie so good is it gives you so much context about Tony's life. And the, the, there's this beautiful scene. I think it's the most powerful scene when Tony's mother is sitting with the principal and the principal is explaining to Tony's mother that you have a talented, gifted leader of a child and he's smart and he just doesn't apply himself. And you see how Tony's mother really struggles with understanding her son's smarts, her son's value, her son's worth, you know, and, and Tony's really a victim of his environment. He wasn't able, he wasn't really loved that much. He didn't get that much attention. He didn't get the individual, you know, care that everyone needs to become who the, their best self. So he became what he became. You know, it's, it, it's, in, it's an incredible piece of context to see how Tony became Tony. And to have James Gandolfini's actual son, Michael, play the role. I mean, you can't get ro more romantic than this. You can't get better than this, you know. And for I was very nervous going into this film just as a lover of The Sopranos because you never know, right? But it is great what they did with this film. I mean, you get to see Carmela is gorgeous as a as a as a teenager. You know, you got to see Silvio. Uh, I didn't really realize that Silvio was much more like Tony's uncle. You know, and and Polly Walnuts as a younger man is just perfect. <laughs> I mean, it's just the film is. I can't really say a bad thing about it. Um, I just kept saying wow throughout the film because it was the way they would weave in these incredibly touching details. I mean, it really, it really is well well worth the watch it's well done i'm very thankful for chase for doing this because it really just ties up the sopranos knot in an extremely beautiful way and the way they end the film is just i mean it makes you get up and clap you know it's i mean just as a lover of the sopranos if you don't know the sopranos universe i'm not sure if you'll like you'll like the movie because it's a good movie it's a good mob movie and it's a good modern movie too you get to see modern um fault lines in a story set in the 60s but it's it's just i can't understate enough how well done it is and how good of a context it gives sopranos fans and i'm so thankful that christopher uh narrates the film because it just makes it perfect i can't underscore enough how perfect this film is for Sopranos lovers like me. So if you haven't watched The Sopranos, go check out The Sopranos before watching this film. If you haven't 
seen the film yet, go check out The Many Saints of Newark. It's an amazing accomplishment, and I'm very thankful that they made it. And I hope you liked it as much as I did. Thanks so much for checking us out this week. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Film Bookcast. You can find more of my work on film-book.com. Just search for Chris Banks or Film Bookcast. You can also find me on Twitter. I'm at cbanksy. That's S-E-E Banksy. I'm also on Instagram, at the Chris Banks. If you listen to this podcast on iTunes or another podcast service, please rate and review this episode. If you're listening on our YouTube channel, Film Book Podcast, please like our video, subscribe to our channel, and leave us a comment in the comment section. It really helps other people discover our podcast. Please also becoming one of our patrons on Patreon at patreon.com slash filmbook. Your support helps us create more engaging content. You'll find our Patreon link below in the description. If you want to tweet about this podcast, just use the hashtag filmbookcast. Tune in next week for the next episode of the Filmbookcast. Thanks for listening, everyone. We'll see you then.